Well, hello, hello, hello to everyone. This is Corky Donovan coming to you tonight to speak with and speak and share with you a few of my thoughts about Volume 3 uh, and the things that stood out to me, things that I found interesting, and how it gave me a different viewpoint on the monster and Victor's relationship throughout the whole novel. There are two quotes from the monster that I will share with you and point out to you that gave me a different view of him and realized that even though he had this anger for Victor, for Victor throughout the whole novel, uh, realized that in the end, the two of them was more connected than, than they may have realized. Even if they tried to ignore it, the two was more connected in the very end, whether they all wanted to realize it or not. <clears throat> Uh, I'll share with you the two sections and how I view them, how it relates to real life situations, and just why they were so interesting to me and how I feel like anybody that reads this novel can relate to it as well. So if we go to the NAF version, with page 272, we'll see a part down after Victor has died and he's uh, in the coffin on the ship and the Fiend comes onto the ship and he's in the same room with Victor. The Fiend walks up to Victor and you see that he makes a statement saying that it is also my victim, speaking to, <coughs> to Walton. That is also my victim, he exclaimed. In his murder, my crimes are consummated. The miserable series of my being is wound to its close. O Frankenstein, generous and self-devoted being, what does it avail that I now ask thee to pardon me? I who irrevocably destroyed thee by destroying all thou lovest. Alas, he is cold, he may not answer me. So from that, to me it's a sense that the fiend now has a sense of remorse, a sense of sadness now that Victor has died. Even though he has constantly stalked Victor throughout his journey and has threatened Victor to kill him, if he did not make the female creature for him, the fiend pretty much made Victor's life miserable in any way possibly he could by killing all those that was closest to him and that he loved. He never killed Victor, but he's killed those closest to him and has harmed those. And even though he's made these threats to Victor, now that Victor is actually gone and dead, I kind of get the sense that the, the fiend never really wished that Victor's death came to pass. With Victor being gone and Victor being dead, it's almost as if the monster has nothing else to live for. It's almost like he's lost his father in a way. He's lost someone that, even though he hated him and had anger for him, he may have actually loved Victor in a way too, or had feelings for Victor. You know, cause that was his creator, somebody that did bring him to life. Uh, kind of get that sense that even though Victor is gone and Victor is dead, the speech that the fiend gives to Victor is almost like he's acting, asking Victor for his forgiveness, to forgive him for how he's made his life miserable, asking him to forgive him for the things that he's done to those he loved. But he knowing Victor is dead, Victor will not answer, Victor will not hear him, Victor will not, he cannot get Victor's forgiveness, it's now too late. So the creature is simply just trying to find comfort in Victor's forgiveness in that scene, in that moment. Now we'll drop down just a little bit on page 272 of the NAF. And the Victor also makes another statement saying that after the murder of Clerval, I returned to Switzerland heartbroken and overcome. I pitied Frankenstein. My pity amounted to horror. I abhorred myself. But when I discovered that he, the author at once of my existence and of its unspeakable torments, dared to hope for happiness, that while he accumulated wretchedness and despair upon me, he sought his own enjoyment and feelings and passions from the indulgence of which I was forever barred. Then impotent envy and bitter indignation filled me with an insatiable thirst for vengeance. So this part where he spoke to me again as well is almost as a sense of jealousy from the monster in that, in that section right there. His whole rage and everything and vengeance for Victor in that part was, it was jealousy. Like he said right here that he was barred from enjoying the same things that Victor was seeking to enjoy and seeking to find pleasure in. 
the monster knew that he would never have what Victor had and what Victor has going on. So it's almost a sense of of jealousy that you created me, but I will never enjoy the same pleasures that you have. So therefore, I'm going to make your life miserable. I'm going to stalk you. I'm going to make you feel the pain that I feel, even though you may try to enjoy these things that normal people do, I can't enjoy it. So I'm going to make your life miserable and painful as much as I can. But after Victor has died and Victor's gone, the monster pretty much has nothing to live for. He has no one to pretty much hold anger towards anymore. No one that he can stalk or no one that he can have that bond and connection with. Even though he was created from dead body parts, him and Victor, at the end, they shared a connection. Whether anybody wants to believe it or not, there was a connection between the two. And it just shows that the monster felt the same pain in a way that most humans do. Humans have that same mentality sometimes. A human can try to make somebody's life miserable or stressful if they are unhappy with their own lives. They say hurt people hurt people. The monster was a hurt person, was a hurt being or creature. So with him being hurt, he would want to share and put his own hurt on Victor. He had somebody that was closest to him in real life, like it happens in real life. Sometimes people hurt those that are closest to them. So this is like the same case with the monster. The monster was hurt and Victor was the closest thing to him that he knew of. So that's who he took his anger and everything out upon. But now that Victor's gone, he has nothing and no one else to the blame, no one to hold accountable for anything and no one to torture. So now the monster seeks his own suicide. He has no reason to live no more. So that's just my touch and my thought on this whole novel uh, and passages in volume three. I'd like to hear your comments and your thoughts and how you thought about my reaction to this, to my video. All right, have a great night.